for the first time here in our studio, Johnny Manziel. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Thanks How are for having you? me on. You got it. Podcaster Johnny Manziel. Host Johnny Manziel. Right? Yeah, so far. Interviewer Johnny Manziel. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Look at you. You're on the Q side of the Q&A. I now. am. I am very How's much. How's that for you? How's that uh, going it's, for it's, you? It's been interesting. It's definitely been a little... Uh, Taking me a little bit of time to get used to, for sure. I've do spent you, so many years on the other side of it. I was about to say, do you have more respect for the Q side of it now? Yeah, no, I definitely do. I think, uh, you know, getting a chance to sit down and be the guy on the other side of things is an interesting take, for sure. Okay. And uh, who have you interviewed so far that you're... So, so far, I've sat down with uh, Tavon Austin, you know, one of the legends of college football. Sure. Um, had LaShawn McCoy on, Greg uh -huh. Odin, um, Lindell White coming out this week. So Lindell I've got some, White. Yeah, so I've got some some an interesting cast of you know some legendary college um, athletes. I feel like. Have you ever met LaShawn McCoy before? Are you friends uh, with him? Just or? in passing, I think throughout the years, you know, you go to a lot of events, you see a lot of guys, you get the chance to meet some guys. But Shady was great, an interesting character for sure. And Greg Odin too. Um, what what did you talk about with him? Uh, you know, I think there's there's a lot of similarities um, of things. That we've been through in our lives and sure. just you know struggle of you know having a of ambition of a goal of turning a career into something that doesn't always necessarily go the way that you anticipated or the way that you think and then you know kind of what comes from that you know there's still a lot of other life that is left to be lived after um after your football or your basketball or whatever your career in, in the sporting world kind of ends. So interesting to hear his take on, on, you know, how life was, you know, when basketball wasn't there anymore. And it's called again, uh, produced and distributed by almost Friday media glory days, new episodes drop every single Thursday. And it premiered back in October, back on the rich eyes and show radio network, sitting at the rich eyes and show desk furnished by Granger with supplies and solutions for every industry. Granger has the right product for you. Call click Granger.com or just stop by. Again, there are new episodes of the new podcast that started back in October, Glory Days, every single Thursday, uh, interviewing sports legends as they reminisce about some of the more remarkable moments and eras in sports that are still remembered and beloved by fans today, produced and distributed by Almost Friday Media, the host of that pod, Johnny Manziel is here on the Rich Eisen Show. It's worthy of applause Ooh, again. Yeah, yeah applause. Absolutely. Sorry, absolutely. Boys. absolutely. The first freshman to ever win the Heisman, Manning, and Davey O'Brien trophies in the same year, back in the day, and the 2012 Heisman Trophy winner is is here. Um, so w when was the uh, first time you realized you were pretty damn good at the football, Johnny? When was that happening? You know, I you? had some standout years in, in high school. I, I, did, I was a late, you know, bloomer, late player into the football world. I didn't really start until seventh grade. Right. Um, so it wasn't something I did when I was real young. I was a baseball guy my whole life growing baseball. up. Yeah, baseball. Playing uh, what? Played middle infield. Um, I thought that's really what I what I was, you know, the best at. What Speed? I wanted to Do you have a little play. pop? You have a little pop? Yeah, I could hit a little bit. Okay. Um, but football kind of came in, took over, and just from there, it was just all all football all the time for the most part. So who's the one who basically said, forget that baseball thing? I, th that? I think my parents were always really supportive of, of me doing whatever I really wanted to do. Right. So I think more than anything, it was me. You know, I think I had more fun, you know, getting hit, being a guy who you know, I got a lot more of a thrill out of football for sure. Playing quarterback, though, when did you start that? Was that? Uh, I always played quarterback from from kind of the time that I ever really started. I don't think I really started taking off and growing into the quarterback position probably until I got into high school. Um, I got in a great system around some great coaches who ran a spread offense that was that was you know perfectly suited, perfectly tailored for you know what I felt like I was good at. And then in front of the twelfth man, which again you know all the Aggies, whenever I mention the twelfth man in Seattle for the Seahawks. They get very pissed off at me. <laughs> very, very pissed off. What was that moment like for you in front of a home crowd for Texas yeah, A&M football for the first time for you? Yeah, it doesn't. Johnny? It doesn't get any better. My first time, I got a chance to play on you know a 3:30 CBS slate of um, you know big time SEC game right. um, against Florida. So you know, anytime we step foot in the Kyle Field and got a chance to play in that stadium in front of you know. Kyle Field, Aggieland is some of the greatest fans, you know, as as you see on a you know week to week basis. So, you know, couldn't be more energy, couldn't be more excitement, couldn't be more just passion within that within that program and within that place. What would you have made in NIL? Do you I would have probably made a good amount. You know, no, 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 no. I need a number. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think you would have made in name, image, and likeness? I mean, Johnny I think Manso. I probably could have made five to ten million, probably somewhere in there, to be able to, you know. In that day and age, being able to have social media and be able to, you know, have the stardom that I feel like I had in in college, um, you know, definitely could have been lucrative. Just, just a little bit, 
outside of that window pretty much yeah, for a few years. D- definitely. When was the first time you did the uh, the money sign? Where I don't think I did from? it until 2013, so I did it in my second year. It was kind of a thing that we had between some guys on our team and then you know did it in the game, and it kind of took off and created a little bit of a life of its own. What was the genesis of the of it? You know, I think just in practice, a couple guys making some good plays and just, you know, something we kind of did within the, you know, inner workings of our team a little bit and, and you know, took off and has definitely stuck around for a long time. And you had some obviously terrific teammates. One of them is a, in my mind, first ballot Hall of Famer, Mike Without a doubt. Evans. What was, what was the first time you ever met him, connected with him? What's your good Mike Evans story? Man, uh, just getting the chance to watch him come in as, a, as we came in at the same time, both you know as freshmen coming in and being able to watch him grow and get to the point of where he is today. He was always that physically you know, dominant, even though it was a guy who you know didn't really, he, he's really come into the wide receiver position. You know, He was a very raw talent whenever he got to Texas A&M, but you know, unbelievable work ethic, an unbelievable receiver, and a guy right now who um, has done things in the NFL that are just mind blowing to me. Um, Consistency is there every day. He's a great teammate. So, you know, he's definitely a guy that I keep up with and definitely, you know, try to watch on Sundays for do you, sure. Do you do keep in touch with, of with course. Mike Evans? Yeah, me and Mike will always be close. We'll always be good friends and, uh, you know, proud of him. Couldn't be more proud of him. And Baker's his guy now, huh? Yeah. I, I think they have a great, great rapport, great connection. Obviously, he's been a little banged up this year which is uh has been tough you know he's he's always dealt with a little bit of some hamstring problems even going all the way back to our days at A&M so you know hopefully he gets a chance to get healthy get back on the field and you know I'm hoping and he can find a way to maybe still crack that thousand yard season this year even though it's going to be tough you chatted up with uh, Baker in the Heisman house at any point in time uh, whenever Johnny? we see each other we yeah. still we still uh we still chop it up a little bit what's it like doing those spots Man, it's great. The uh, the Heisman guys in that fraternity and the people that are in there are just you know absolutely amazing. From the from the older legends to the guys, you know who I played against or was around the same time, same age as me. So, you know, it's a special experience to be able to, you know, have a good laugh. They're all pretty funny to be able to you know do those spots and 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 uh, you know for me I love it. It's it's a blessing. Who would you meet that you you were like okay that's pretty cool. Man, anytime house. you get a chance to be around like Bo Jackson or, or you know, <laughs> it's it's just a surreal experience, you know, having, you know, seen highlights of this guy, what he was able to do, what kind of player he was, just really off the map of just legendary status. So, you know, anytime you see Barry Sanders walking around or ever run into him, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty sick. So another baseball guy who played as a hobby, right? Just, yeah. just, just as like hobby. you, yeah, just, just like, like you, me. exactly. <laughs> he had a little. Bit. I think the guy had more talent in his pinky than I did. My uh, whole body. I would go up to him, and uh, he's been on the show before. And I wished we had more than just fifteen minutes with him, with Bo Jackson. Yeah. So what do you talk about when yeah. you do? You go up to him, you pick his brain, you just you just sit there, sit around, and just uh, swap I, stories. I, and... I think more than anything, just get a chance to go up and just check in, see how things are doing, just be able to swap some stories. Obviously, a little bit about, you know, I I try and and you know obviously ask about you know some legendary times of things that you've seen him do and and pick him pick his brain and see what it was really like on the field or or off the field yeah i mean i mean definitely definitely on the field i think okay. for the most part <laughs> i'm just trying to dig in there and see what the what you guys talk I, at the heisman house just walking around where there's there's des there's you there's baker there's what eddie george walking around there's all these guys walking do you ever talk about whether they voted for you or not does that ever come up uh, in maybe, a conversation maybe um you know in the year that i want it maybe sometime around then when you're first getting a chance to like meet the guys and stuff but you know well, after, say, the, after that for i me? think <laughs> after that i think we're more on to like current topics that we talk about more about who they're watching this year who they think they're going to vote for this year and just you know seeing kind of who we're going to welcome in next who do you who do you think Man, you know, obviously Travis Hunter's having a great season. He's the favorite right now. I've, I really think that it's, you know, what Ashton Genty's been doing at Boise State has been, you know, as impressive as it, impressive as it gets, week in and week out, just putting up absolute numbers in the clinic, and, you know, has Boise State and a real chance to be able to make it into the playoff this year. It's amazing you just mentioned two players who don't play quarterback. Yeah. Right. So, which quarterback do you think should at least get to New York? How does um, that sound? I, I think probably Cam Ward. You know, I think um, the way he's played at Miami this year, you know, the way he plays the game of football, I think he's a guy that's probably deserving to be in New York. You know, they've had some close games and close calls that he's really, you know, played well enough to dig them out and really get them some wins in some situations that maybe, you know, they didn't deserve. Yeah, I mean, just watching him in the final 
five, ten minutes of a game. It's unbelievable some yeah. of the things that you're that you're seeing him. Yeah, no, the Virginia right Tech there. game was was one where he really, you know, kind of willed them back into into that win and and didn't look like they were going to get it done. So, you know, just the effortless. He, he plays really football really effortlessly, right? You see him out there, it just looks like he's kind of um, floating. He makes it look pretty easy. And and you know, listen, no disrespect to Ashton Genty or Cam Ward or any of the other quarterbacks. Watching Travis Hunter doing what he's doing, that's like a unicorn. You know what I mean? Like playing a hundred snaps at least. I mean, that's that's a minimum. I, I might be under undercounting the number of snaps that he plays in a game, right? Yeah. And the the plays that he makes that changes a game on either side. Yep. I, I I mean, we're and he's he's playing more offense than Charles Woodson ever did. Yeah. No. You know I what mean, I mean? Like we haven't seen anything like this. You know, we haven't right? seen anything where a guy's playing. You know, 100 snaps a game, 50 and 50, and, and really making an impact on both sides of the ball. And I, I think you just see it, you know, almost every single week. This guy's just, he, he's going to be something special, especially when he gets to the next level, I believe, too. Do you think he can do that at the next level? Um, I mean, that would be the first time that we've ever really kind of see that. You know, I, I think as you get into the NFL and as you see with these guys, they're probably... You know, you might have some packages or a couple, you know, formations or something that you would see right. putting him in at receiver, but I, I don't think it's a full-time thing that you can really do at the next level. You don't think so, huh? No, I don't. Do you? <sighs> I think Dion is building him for that purpose. I think Dion is definitely 100%. I can't wait to get Prime on the show in the next couple weeks to basically just pick his brain on on his thoughts on it. I think he he thinks the kid can do it, if I had a guess, and that the kid probably wants to try it. Yeah. The only question is, is he going to have a coaching staff that would allow it or, it's just so or physical. foster it in the same way that Dion is doing right now? Because Dion's fostering it right now, and you could see the results. But, you know, there's more uh, grown-ass men at the next level. It's definitely a more physical tolling, you know, game at the next level to be able to go and do that and put – that many snaps on your body and be able to, you know, do it on both sides of the ball, time in and time out. I think would be, uh, it would be tough. But I think if anybody's got it's close enough to being able to do it, it's definitely him. Yeah, I think I think Dion is probably you know creating him in this lab with the idea of at least attempting it, and at least telling some coaches, you know, when he's at the combine or in these interviews to say, hey, uh, I want to try it, you know, and maybe a team might pass on him for that, but I I doubt it. I doubt he's so incredibly talented. I, I would vote for him for the Heisman. Is that is that who you would? Um, I know you're counseled not um, to say these things publicly, but go ahead if you if you want. I mean, I think vote for I still want to kind of you know I I let the whole season regular season kind of sure. play itself out, but no, he's definitely at the top of the list right now with with you know him and Genty. I think are, are neck and neck. You know, it's every single week checking the box score on kind of both of those guys and and being able to see you know the highlights and kind of what they put out on film for. The week before, but you know, two guys who are who are I think neck and neck. Do you ever cross paths with Prime Johnny Manziel? Um, it's it's been a while. We did we did um, in the past. Of my family's in Dallas. You know, sure. he, was in, he was in Frisco. Um, so every now and then run into each other. We've always had a good relationship. If we ever you know run into each other, he couldn't be more nice. Couldn't be more um, you know great to me, and always has been since. You know, probably 2012. Johnny Manziel here. Everybody catch his new pod, Glory Days, every single Thursday. Uh, you can listen to new episodes, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast produced and distributed by Almost Friday Media. A couple more minutes left with uh, with Johnny right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, what would you tell yourself on draft night? Sitting here now, if you could make that phone call to your phone that you were sitting there on draft night, what would you have told yourself? I would have probably told myself to relax a little bit and just, uh, you know, trust the process and, and where, where things are going to go. You know, I think I was so, you know, worried and anxious at that time in my life of, you know, necessarily feeling like I had to be a first round pick or I had to be this or I had to be that. Um, and, and I think I would have probably enjoyed the moment a little more. You know, I think if I would go back in time, I don't know if I would go to the NFL draft. I think I would have been better for me to, to spend it with my family and kind of be be somewhere else it was a little bit of a whirlwind looking back on it now but you know just just to enjoy the moment a little bit more and not to be so stressed you know I put in a lot of work before the draft to be able to put myself in a position put a lot of good things on tape to be able to get drafted so um, you know just kind of to be a little more calm I, I've, I've been meaning to ask you these questions I'm glad you're sitting here uh, for, for years did you think the Cowboys were coming to get you um, I did. Is is that pick was was kind of going by at sixteen? You know, people around my circle and my camp, my agent. You know, they didn't have really any 
um, you know, thought or like, you know, that that was going to even remotely be the case at all. But, you know, me just being, you know, a Texas guy, um, having grown up liking the Cowboys, you know, I think there was always like a thought that if I was sitting there at that point in time, um, that maybe it would have happened. Did you meet with Jerry pre pre draft? No, never did. No, never did. Anybody with the Cowboys pre draft? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, what about the Browns? Did you meet with anybody? Yeah, I met, I met the with the Browns, um, you know, once at the at the combine, and then again at in uh, a meeting in College Station. It, did do, Did you ever meet the person who apparently on the street told uh, the owner <laughs> of the Browns to draft you? Is, no, I, I definitely did. Is that a true story? I definitely did. I'm not sure. I'm you, not sure. you You don't even know if that's no, true, huh? I don't. Because that's the story. Is yeah. you know that somebody who was a big fan of yours and. And told the uh, the Browns ownership go ahead and draft him. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember seeing something like that, but no, I never uh, never got a fact check on okay. it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go go straight up the, <laughs> the flagpole for that one. Um, so what would you tell your your training camp self if you could go back in time right now, Johnny? You know, I think for me, I would have blocked off um, you know a lot of my li- my a lot of my other life, a lot of my outside life, and and really. Um, you know, it was a huge transition for me just getting into the difference in, you know, this play style, the play calling, um, the way the NFL offense kind of works. You know, at Texas A&M, it couldn't have been more easy, couldn't have been more free flowing of a, of a spread offense and one that, um, you know, when I got to the NFL, was it was a really big adjustment for me. You know, I think I spent you know, a couple months just getting into, you know, where you get your eyes on certain plays, reading coverage, you know, just being able to, um, you know, it took me a while to be able to learn the game a little bit. And one that I really didn't feel like, you know, I started to get a good grip on until, you know, m- you know, after a training camp my second year. So I think, you know, after being as successful as I was in college mm-hmm. and really being able to kind of, um, you know, breeze through at times a little bit, I wish I would have put just a little bit more effort into the, into that training camp self. Yeah. And so what do you think when you look back? When you think about your career, um, I, I or look, you don't do it too much, do you no, no, of course I do. I mean, I'm I'm still a guy who watches you know NFL football, you know college football every uh-huh. weekend. I'm still pretty you know dialed into it for the most part, and, and it's it's tough. You know, you see guys that you're drafted with that are still playing. You see guys like you know played with Mike Evans, guys still on his you know 11th year or whatever it is, and you know it's something that you miss. It's something that um, you know you wish things would have gone differently. And I think for me. You know, I, I, there's just things I wish I would have done differently. At times, I have a little bit of regret. You know, I obviously moved on a lot with my life now and in a place where, you know, I still feel good and still feel happy even without the game of football being there. But, you know, there is always a regret and always a wish and a hope that, um, you know, I would have done things better, done things the right way, and been able to have a little bit longer career doing something that I genuinely love. So who do you want on your pod? Uh, Who's on your wish list, Johnny? Man, you know, I think... I sat down with Matt Liner. That was something that was really cool for me, a, sure. a Heisman guy. So I think for me, <clears throat> to be able to have some of the Heisman guys on there will, will, will be um, something that I'll be looking forward to the most. Just being able to, you know, share that with them, go through their Heisman years, be able to talk about it a little bit for me, I think is something that I'm super interested in. So what would you uh, ask yourself about remarkable moments in sports, if you could? Like, what was yours? Um, what was yeah. yours? You know, I got a chance to do some really amazing things, play some amazing games against some unbelievable talent. You know, uh, an Alabama game always will will stick ripe in my in my memory, in my mind of, you know, what it felt like walking off that that field that day and beat the number one team in the country and getting four bills, one. man. You put yeah. up, you put four bills on them. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Evans had, some, had I think like two hundred sixty yards. He had like a Jamar Chase game. Had that, some that game. had some good good battles with with Coach Saban in Alabama. So you know, just getting a chance to play in the SEC and getting a chance to play at an amazing school like a and I think, um, you know, just just got a chance to make some great memories, some ones that still last and, and stick around. Did you cross paths with Saban on the field after that game? Um, I did a little bit, but I got a chance to go on college game day this year and get a chance to talk to him a little bit and hang around him. So um, what a great coach, what a legend of the game, and somebody that was really fun to get a chance to play against. I bet you he remembered every snap <laughs> of that game. I, I'm Johnny. sure he did. He, re- he definitely <laughs> razzed me a little bit and said it was better to be – you know, sitting up on that booth with him there than having to go and play against him. And, and you know, what, what a legend. Dude, you and McAfee would have been a great hang, that's for sure. For sure. Back in the, Did you hang with McAfee at all? I, I, didn't, get really? a chance, I didn't get you a chance Pat? to really know him back in the day. But, you know, it no. was awesome to get a chance to be on game day with him. He's uh, he's, he's electric. Yeah, it's, he's really brought some life to that whole college game day set. It's fun to watch on Saturday. Yeah, man. So who's So who would be on your wish list? 
I get asked that all the time. Who do you want to have on your show? And, um, you know, so this is your pod now. You, you get yeah, out there. I'm getting a chance to kind of, you know, run and control it a little bit. And there you go. Call I, your own place. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I think one that I'll be looking forward to the most, it'll be the most special, is probably having Mike on. I think that's somebody that, you know, I want to be able to sit down and talk about, you know, what we went through at A&M, you know, yeah. the legendary things that we got to do together and then obviously what he's doing now. So I think that's somebody, even though you know him, even though it's a good friend for me, you know, I think it'll be something that'll be cool to do. Uh, I, is he the only guy on the planet who can say I uh, caught footballs from Johnny Manziel and Tom Brady? <laughs> Maybe. I'm trying. I'm going through yeah. my head right now. How many? Good one. I'm, I'm. I'm wondering how many other guys can say such a thing. Yeah, uh, that's that's Johnny Manziel. I, I beat Alabama catching footballs from Johnny Manziel, and I beat uh, Kansas City catching footballs from Tom Brady. That's not bad. Not at all. Johnny, I think the thing about your story that I like is isn't the story. You know, you started the year. You could walk home after games. And then you beat Alabama and you need a police escort. Like, is anyone ever ready for that type of catapult to fame? Yeah, I think it's it was definitely, you know, an overnight rise, definitely an overnight change in my life. And, and you know, um, I don't know if anybody's ever ready for it. You know, I think at the point in time of, of when I was in school, when I was in college, um, you know, social media was just starting to get big. It was just the changing of, of kind of the way the world works a little bit. So I think I was... Um, you know, right in the thick of it. I think maybe guys are a little bit more prepared for it now, and I know at the time that I definitely wasn't. TJ, what about your meteoric rise to fame? <laughs> People are stopping you in the street now, right? I mean, that's only because of you, though. Does it? <laughs> I, know, I feel like I'm the Johnny Manziel of this equation right here. I should start making. I should start going like this. Uh, Johnny, congrats on your pod again. Every single uh, Thursday, you can listen to new episodes. Uh, of Glory Days, produced and distributed by Almost Friday Media. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for coming in here, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for having Anytime. me. Anytime. That's Johnny Manziel yeah, right man. here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.